up, y'all? This your girl, Mary May. You chilling with me live on my webcast series. It's called The Set. And uh, I'm here promoting the brand new album in your stores right now. It's called Conquer. Okay. So talk a little bit about that. You know, tell us about your new album and, you know, kind of what was some of the inspiration behind this latest project and things like that. Uh, to, be, be, to be honest, uh, Conquer is really uh, what I consider to be part two of uh, So Much Better. Okay. Uh, Conquer, you know, is a, a culmination of a healing process, you know, that I've been going through just to find my way back uh, to trying to love this again. And, uh, you know, I, I kind of fell back a while because I somewhat, you know, fell out of love with the music business. Okay. You know, but I, I never fell out of love with music. Uh, but. You know, I just kind of wanted to reorganize things and mm -hmm. reassess. You know, I think sometimes in life that's necessary, reassessment. And, mm -hmm. You know, to kind of, you know, take an overhaul of what you, you know, the decisions you've been making and things that you've been involved with. Definitely. And speaking of growth, um, how would you say that you've grown as an artist from your departure with um, Bad Boy? Um, I can definitely say that, you know, my style, you know, really hasn't changed. You know, I've always believed that, you know, that the vision, uh, the, the initial vision that Puff had for me as an artist was always the correct one. Uh, we, we, and we always agreed on that. I just feel, you know, through, through, through time that it's necessary for the music to be, you know, given a chance to breathe and become uh, more broad, you know, broader, you know, for the people. Just the sound uh, is set up to just garner uh, more fans and, you know, kind of stress things out. Okay. Yeah. Um, would you say as you've grown through the years, are you a lot more involved, hands-on with your projects versus when you well, initially I've, Well, I, I've always been hands-on with my projects. Um, you know, I mean, I've never, I don't trust anybody that much. I mean, <laughs> <you know. laughs> right, right. I've always been there. And, you know, to just not be off track, um, I, I, I work with Mike City, my brother Mario Winans, uh, Black Elvis. I had a chance to, you know, uh, work with Rico Love, you know, gave me the single. Okay. Um, my man J.R. Hudson, mm -hmm. uh, Andre Harris out okay. of Philadelphia. Uh, it was just a really, really easy going process. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, were some of these people, have you reunited with them from prior albums? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Mike City and I did, uh, you know, our wish. Okay. Together. And uh, me and Mario, we did emotional. Okay. Okay. Yeah. If we can be friends, I can definitely say that you spoke a lot yeah, about what's uh, going on in the R&B world today. You know, the men are, <laughs> did you say they're just whining or complaining? Well, I mean, they just usually in a, they just usually put in a position of weakness in my opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, but this, this album represents what I like to call hero music. Okay. You know, uh, it's a lot of winning on this album, there's a lot of victory on this album. You know, the hero usually wins in every song. Okay. I like that. I like that. Who were some of your um, musical influences? Well, I was greatly influenced by Marvin Gaye um, and Stevie, and I was greatly influenced by the, the entire MTV revolution mm -hmm. and the, just the whole singers, songwriter era, the late 70s and early 80s. I was really, really influenced by 
you know, cats, uh, you know, cats like uh, Elton John and Billy Joel and, and uh, Sting, and, uh, Bobby Caldwell. Wow. And, you okay. know, just really influenced by those singers, songwriters. Right? Okay, just to piggyback off of, um, you know, you're just talking about your growth throughout the years and things like that. Um, how do you remain focused and tenacious? You know, in the music industry, we know that it's a beast. You know, and it's a lot to stay relevant. Like, what are some of your ways or advice that you can give for? Yeah, I mean, it is. The music business is a beast, you know. But it's even more of a beast if you don't belong here. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people... A lot of people, this is, uh, I mean, unfortunately, the music business is a lot, of, is a business where a lot of people are involved who really aren't study, who really are not students, who really don't really understand it. But it's a hustle now, nonetheless. So there are a lot of individuals in the music business that just really, really don't belong here. Okay. You know, I mean, I wouldn't want to be operated on by a doctor that didn't go to med school. Right. You know, so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and what's in your lineup right now? Uh, what I'm listening to? Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, man, I'm listening to a lot of things. On my way over here, I was listening to incarcerated Scarfaces. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> definitely makes for a good time. I have martini parties at my house sometimes. Okay. Where I just invite my friends over and we make fruit-based martinis and, you know, play video games or Monopoly or whatever it is. Okay. You know, we have a lot of fun. Okay. And um, right now, oh, I'm also listening to Kendrick Lamar. You know what I mean? Um, okay. Somebody I'm really keeping my eye on out on the West Coast. Uh, really talented. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's really important. It's really important to me uh, to really stay abreast on, you know, what's happening in hip hop as well as R and B because, you know, it's a reflection of the community. Yeah. Uh, you know, you you, uh, you get a better idea, you know what I mean, of what young people are experiencing as opposed to when I was 22. You know what I'm saying? Me being in my 30s right now, uh, there's just some things that. I don't have to deal with anymore some elements that I don't have to deal with anymore that you know but I can remember I can remember being 16 and absolutely sure that I was not going to see 21 wow. you know because so many of my friends were just getting peeled off and you know just a victim of the GMH you know what I'm saying if you don't really know what the GMH is that stands for the ghetto mishap <laughs> <laughs> definitely you know so you know, uh, but I had a lot of prayer on my life, and uh, I, I, I really believe that the prayers of the saints avail much. You know, okay. So, uh, you know, I just really just just revel in what it is I'm supposed to be doing. I, I I do a lot of things well, but I think the best way to make your handprint in life is to do your best work. Absolutely. And to me, music is my best work. Okay. Okay. Now I noticed um, on this latest album, Conquer, you uh, collab with Snoop. Um, yeah. Song. One yeah. of my favorite collabs was yeah, the song. Snoop, <laughs> Snoop and I, you know, we've been we've been friends since we were very young. You know, we've been okay. friends uh, for a while, and we always wanted to do a record together, but never really felt like people would understand the contrast. Okay. You know, uh, Snoop. You know, his music is gangster, but right. when he first came out, he gangster. Yes. <laughs> you, know, you know, but um, at this point, you know, in my career and at this point in his career, you know, it just made, it made perfect sense. Okay. You know, it made perfect sense, and uh, you know, for those of y'all that don't know, Snoop's actually singing. <laughs> <laughs> I know this. Yeah, yeah. 
Okay. <laughs> it was actually singing on on the record, you know. Okay. So that was that was that that was definitely an experience for me. Okay. And speaking of gangster, one of my favorite um, groups, The Locks. Um, yeah. I love the collab you did with Sheik. Mm -hmm. One name, like how was that? Just working with. Yeah, them? I, I mean the Locks, you know, they're family to me, mm -hmm. and I'm always willing to do anything they ask, you know. Uh, there's never been a time where I where I've needed something, mm -hmm. you know, and I didn't get it or whatnot, you know. But I, I really love those guys a lot, okay. you know. Uh, extremely talented. I'm waiting. I'm, I'm, I'm eagerly anticipating their next album. Okay. Okay. Um, what's next for you? Well, right now I'm just really spending time. I'm gonna take a break for Christmas. Okay. I'm take a break for Christmas, and uh, uh, Snoop and I are gonna actually shoot the video on Saturday. And uh, I'm gonna take a little break mm -hmm. for Christmas, and uh, you know, January 2nd, I'll be right back on the road. You know, just raising awareness of Bob Conquer and and uh, getting back in front of the people, and uh, just visiting, you know, the different retailers and radio stations, and just showing them how much I appreciate them for being there for me because. Uh, you know, they support me when I have a product to you any hip hop, you know, he listens to other things that kind of stimulate his artistry or, mm. you know, kind of just get him in a mood. Right. You're going through things. Um, is there one album that you just can't live without or one artist that you can always Yeah, choose? you know, uh, when I'm going through things, you know, and I want to be inspired, I listen to a lot of Coldplay. Okay. You know what I mean? I really believe that, uh, I really believe that Chris Martin's pen is anointed, man. You know what I mean? Just uh, if you listen to some of those messages, you know I can remember. Uh, I can remember, uh, you know, losing my brother in 2004, and uh, you know I was really going through it hard with the process of grief. And there was a Coldplay record I was listening to that just I listened to it. I, I think maybe a hundred times in a row was describing everything I was feeling. You know, old oh, brother, I can't. I can't get through. I've been trying hard to reach you and I don't know what to do. You know what I mean? And it just, you know, it was just, it was just like, like a band-aid on a wound, you know what I mean? Okay. You know, and, you know, just, uh, just, uh, just a testament to the power of lyrics. Have you reached out to them for the possibility of doing a collab before? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I'm just the type of, type of cat where I just really believe that, you know, those things make room for themselves. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've always been a fan of Sting, you know, and his music and his songwriting and police and whatnot. And, you know, I, when I did Emotional, mm -hmm. uh, I actually had to meet him because he, he uh, approves all his own samples. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, okay. Emotional was uh, created off of a sample of a song of his called The Shape of My Heart. Okay. Off of the professional soundtrack uh, in an album he did called Ten Summoner's Tale. Okay. You know? You mentioned Roy Ayers um, earlier. He has a lot of samples. Have you used, uh, well, his music has been sampled, like, religiously. <laughs> like, have you sampled any of his music? No, I really haven't, uh, but it's really, his music is really inspirational to me. I really like, uh, I really like where it takes me. Kind of, it kind of gives me a, gives me a view, you know, into what was going on back in that day. You know, my album, Conquer, was really created for one reason. It was only to be, soundtrack behind people's lifestyle. You know, it's really not that hard or difficult. I think the greatest I think the greatest compliment that an artist and musician can be paid is for people to monitor their life and times through your music and your body of work. So when when somebody look back at your stuff and say, you know, I remember exactly where I was and what I was doing when that crowd time was record was up. It's just aggressive great stuff. Yeah, my website, if you want to come check me out, Everybody, you can see me at CarlThomasLive.com. Uh, there's always show updates, and I'm always <coughs> posting brand new videos, and, and, and so I like to let people in on my personal life. And uh, I even invite people into my kitchen, you know, when I'm cooking and what have you. You know, my bedroom. If things are wrong, yeah. I got you standing right here. I know I wish I Paul, I want to thank you for allowing me to do this interview this evening. Um, oh, thank you. Yes, it was a pleasure um, meeting you. You're so down to earth. You're going to get that from a lot of artists.